Welcome to this short video about Amadeus Pro. I'm going to show you a few things you can do with it. I have here a recording from a recent interview. At the moment it's a stereo AIFF track. What I want to do is I want to have it on two separate tracks. There's me talking at the top and there's Evan Montgomery talking at the bottom. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to sound and we're going to split the track. Okay, so now we have two tracks and I want to zoom in on a small part of it. So what I'm going to do with this is let's just zoom in on this part of the front here. Go to view and take to zoom to section, which is command J. If I want to zoom in a little bit closer, what I could do is I could scroll the mouse wheel forwards and backwards. If I scroll forwards, we're zooming in and getting closer and closer in to see more detail of the waveform. OK, let's get to the start of this bit here and we start playing by pressing the space bar. OK, then, so let's get started with this. This is uh, Dave Allen from Mac 20. So that's just a little bit I was working with there and this is another bit here. Introduce yourself and tell us what you do in life. I'm Evan Montgomery. I live in Colorado. In order to help me clean up the sound, I might use Command M to insert a marker in there. So when I have a marker in there and let's put a marker in over at the end of that part there. Then I can use command and the left arrow to select to the marker on the left. And then use the right arrow to go to the right marker. Now what I want to do is I want to tell it to generate silence in that area there. And I'm going to click on OK. So you can see that we've got silence in this bit area and then just have this bit area coming through. OK, we can do the same thing on the other side there. So if I put in a marker over there. Share to do this again, command left arrow, command right arrow, and then I can do command T, and the same thing's happened, and this bit here is a silenced area. Now something that you might want to do quite often is to cut a bit out, say if you fluff a word here, maybe this section here is a fluffed word, something I've made a mistake, and I need to chop that out. All I've got to do is do a select that area, you can see the area that's been selected because it's yellow. If I do Command, Option and X, it will slightly extend that out so that it goes as far as where the sound crosses the zero point. This is the zero point here along the middle. And all I've got to do is press the backspace key and it is chopped out. And that is so much easier doing that in Amadeus Pro than it is doing it in, in GarageBand. If we want to see the whole sound here, we can do. We just click that button there, or we click it to get it out, out of the way. And we have the job done. We can use this button down the bottom here to do the zooming in and out too. And you can see with the numbers just above the slider there, that you have a way to gauge exactly how much you've zoomed in. See where the number comes up, look. And I so say I can scroll left and right by using the mouse on the Mighty Mouse. So that's how easy it is to generally do some work with some sound. Let's say, for instance, that I've decided this part here isn't loud enough compared to this, the rest of it that's around there. So if I go to Effects and then go to Amplify, I can change that to Amplify by 5 decibels. I can include a fade in there if I want to and just click on Apply and as you can see, the sound got bigger, which means it's going to be louder. If I want to, I can add a, another track to this. OK, let's uh, add another track by going to Sound and add new mono track. So now we have three tracks in this here. Let's just make sure we have this last one selected and I'm going to press Command R and I'm going to start recording. It starts recording as soon as you uh, get in there. I can click on that button there and it is paused. You see the levels are still going down but nothing is being recorded. If I click that again and I'm recording again. So I click on stop and that gets put into the bottom there. Now something that you can do with this because it's a multi-track editor is you can move tracks along. Now one track has to stay at the beginning so these two are at the beginning at the moment but I can take this track here and I can have it start over here if I want to. Or I can have this track start over here. So you can see how easy it is to have tracks start where you want them to. Simple stuff. Now then, we don't 
we want this track anymore so we'll just select that there right click on it or command click on it and I can tell it to either merge the previous track or delete the track let's just move this down a little bit first of all let's move that over to there so now what I'm going to do is I'll tell it to merge the previous track doing this little thing there it's going to take a couple of seconds to do and there you go we've got it merged now it's merged it into two separate channels there so it's kind of a stereo track now so then what we have to do is we have to tell it to convert back to mono there we go we're back into a mono track again there and all we've got to do is put our marker there click the play and button and i'm going to start recording it starts recording as soon as you get in there okay question number two okay. is what hardware are you using these days is it business pleasure or both Okay, I don't want to be talking over the top of myself, so let's just do another thing again where we're taking this section here and we're going to tell it to generate silence. So now we have silence in that area. Okay, question number two is what hardware are you using these days? Is it business pleasure or both? And you see it's working again. So there you go, that's how easy it is to work with Amadeus Pro. Now another thing that you might want to do is you might want to take a WMA file and convert that WMA file to an MP3 file. And good news is that you can do this with Amadeus Pro. And what you have to do with that is to do a batch processor. Okay, so we've got a batch processor and we want the resulting format to be MP3. And we can change the settings there if we want to, but we're going to leave that as is because 128 is a fairly standard one. It depends on what your starting what your starting point is. I mean, there's no point in uh, reducing it down unless you want to make the file smaller anyway. Destination is going to be the original location. We're going to tell it to delete the original, and we're going to change some of the metadata. So the the artist in this one is going to be Pearl Jam. And the album is going to be uh, Greatest Hits. Greatest Hits. Not going to bother changing all these, but we could do if we want to. Let's get the uh, find the window up there. And it's pretty easy to get this started. All we've got to do is, see we've got one there that's already changed into MP3. Let's take this one here called Breath, and we're going to drag it and drop it into this area here. And as soon as we've done that, it's going to start doing its job. Let's move that out of the way for a moment and we can see that the batch processor is working on that file and it's going to convert it to an MP3. As soon as it's finished converting it to MP3, it will delete the original. Now we can see that that uh, file, Breath, has been changed to an MP3. And if we drag and drop that into the iTunes, we can get it into iTunes. Batch process succeeded without error or warning.